first thought he was good looking. <laughs> you know, when I asked the Lord for him, I tell the Lord, you know, I'm fairly tall and my bones are long, so I really need somebody who's a little taller than me. The Lord came through. I need somebody handsome, you know, to open me the cabinets. <laughs> Just so you know what? You know what kind of a face that you know? I need somebody who is going to be faithful, who's going to tell me every place they go because I'm kind of needy, you know? I need somebody with patience because I can test your patience. The one thing I told the Lord is that I needed somebody with a little curly hair. <laughs> And when the Lord did not give me the little curly hair, I thought, you know what I did? I bought some texture. <laughs> <laughs> oh I, I got over the curly hair, though. So at that time, I needed to be exactly what I wanted to be. God, be fearful. I want to present to you Reverend Granny Griffith as you bring the word of God this morning. Blessed Resurrection Sunday to us, you all, hallelujah. You know he's good to laugh. He's a good person for the soul. If you can't laugh, something wrong. Hallelujah. This morning's message is going to be taken from Mark 16, verses 1 to 4. Brother Shaw can read. Read that together on the screen. Mark chapter 16, verses 1 to 4. And let us read together. Let me read it from the screen. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the secular of the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, Who shall we not away the stone from the door of the secular? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was their very grave. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's think about it. Let's think about what the scripture has just said. The scripture tells us one thing here in these few verses. That these three women, Mary, Mary Magdalene, and Salome. Salome was Mary's sister. She was Jesus' aunt. As they headed, as they headed to the tomb, they had just one question on their mind. Who will roll away the stone? You see, the stone was a very large stone. Very, very large stone at the tomb. They knew it was a very large stone. They knew it would have taken about 20 men or so to remove the stone. The opening was a big, the opening was very large and the stone was a huge stone to be moved. So these women knew that they didn't stand the chance in rolling away the stone. But they wanted to do what they wanted to do was to anoint their beloved Sarah's dead body. It would be their last act of love towards the one who showed them love. He showed us tremendous love when he was here on earth. We can testify to that. Not us, but all four fathers can testify to that. We have read it in the Bible over and over again. But they just wanted to, to pay their last respect by anointing his body with special oils. But how can they do it? A stone was in their way. A stone was in their way. As they headed to the stone that morning, that was the foremost thing on their minds. Apparently they were not thinking about whether the guards will let them approach the tomb. They weren't worried about being arrested as followers of Christ. They weren't wondering why Peter and the others were not joining them. They weren't concerned with how they would react to seeing Jesus' dead body, body bruised, 
and the male pierced feet and hands, and where the soldier had pierced the side of this area. The word concern, saying Jesus crucified, laying dead in the tomb. No, all they were really thinking about was who would roll away the stone for them. Because it was a very large stone. Easter means many things to us as Christians. It is too big a miracle to mean just one thing. Yes. Easter clearly means that Christ is risen. It means that Jesus has defeated death. Easter means that the eternal life is real. The death does not end our life with God. That all who live and believe will never know a second death. Amen. All who live and believe will never know a second death. But the stone being rolled away from the tomb mentioned in the Bible was on purpose. This simple detail was recorded in all four Gospels. So the Gospel of Matthew, the Gospel of Mark, the Gospel of Luke, and the Gospel of John. It tells us something about Easter that I think is quite significant. The stone being rolled away tells us that Easter is also about the way which God removes obstacles in our lives. Amen. Those obstacles that try to keep us from God and try to stop us from living the life that God has called us to live. Today, I invite you to think about the large stone in your life. Those obstacles that keep you from living the full, abundant life with Christ. Here and now. Think about those challenges that are trying to keep you in your tomb, so to speak. Those battles that paralyze you with fear that trap you, that try to stop you from living, really living our new lives in Christ. Think about it. And then think about the East, what Easter teaches us about how God plans to remove those stones. The women were at the tomb. But what was happening to the other disciples back in the upper room? Let's start with Peter and the other men. All the disciples, all who were following Jesus, did you notice that they did not appear in the gospel reading as being at the tomb of Jesus? All the disciples, all the men that were in the upper room, sorry men, but we weren't there. We weren't there. They are not going to the tomb to help the women remove the stone. No, they are all locked away in the upper room, afraid for their lives. No one even remember a word about who would roll away the stone for them. They couldn't get the men to go to the tomb with them. The men were in hiding, locked away. They had created a tomb for themselves and put a stone of their making, which was fear and shame over it. The men were frightened. <laughs> The women who came up the Sunday morning and went to the tomb. <laughs> and the men didn't really want the storm. And they really didn't want the storm rolled away. This is the men in the upper room. They didn't want the storm rolled. They didn't want to remain in the upper room. And they even include the lead, and that even include the leader of those disciples, Peter. Peter is the one who denied even knowing Jesus after Jesus was arrested. And now it seems that he is still denying knowing Jesus disconnected from the tomb and the chief cornerstone in public. Mm -hmm. Peter was a leader and he ran away, so what expect to happen to the other people? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Peter, by the way, is a nickname given to him by Jesus. And it really, really means rock or stone. Peter is supposed to be the stone, the rock, which Christ will build his church. And despite all of that, he is still the one who used to start the church as we know it today. Despite he ran away, Jesus still used him to start the church. But this Easter morning, and the leader of the disciples locked away with other disciples, trembling in fear, you might say, 
In this case, that's the stone be the meat roll away. It's himself. Sometimes that's true for us, isn't it? We get our we get our own way, we create our own tombs, and the stone covering the tomb is our own very self. We create it for our own very self. Who will roll away the stone? Well, after Jesus was raised from the dead, he did as he promised. He showed himself to the disciples. Jesus entered the upper room. He rolled away the stone. He freed them of their fears and helped them to proclaim the good news to the world. This is part of the Easter miracle for us. Praise the Lord. Our risen Lord entered our lives and even our tombs and rolled away the stones that are keeping us from being all that God wants us to be. He frees us from fear and help us proclaim his message to the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The women, of course, didn't need Jesus to come to the upper room. They had the courage to go to the tomb themselves, even though they didn't know what they would do when they got there. And that too teaches us something, doesn't it? That sometimes we need to leave our tombs. We need to step out in faith and we need to trust that God will be there for us and help us in our needs. The women knew they couldn't roll the stone away, but it didn't stop them from going to the tomb. If Easter means anything, it certainly means that God will be with us always, and especially when we need God to be. Hallelujah. You see, the women trust in God. Despite the circumstances that existed, they trust in God. But we can't let the women get off quite that easily. Go back to the happening. Go back to what happened the first Easter Sunday when the women arrived at the tomb. The stone was already rolled away from the tomb. They need not have worried about death at all. But when they told, but when they were told to go and tell Peter and the other disciples that Jesus is going ahead of them to Galilee, that they will see him just as he promised. So what did the women do? They fled from the tomb and said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. And this is now in the book of Acts. Sorry, this is going in the book of Mark in the Bible. This is the end of the story in the book of Mark. Hallelujah. Even after we step out in faith, we can still find ourselves stumbling. There, there, are, there are lots of stones in our path, it turns out, and it's easy to stumble. The women said nothing, the women said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. So what were the women afraid of? Perhaps of being laughed at? How could Jesus go to Galilee if he was dead? Perhaps of what they had just witnessed? He rolled away stone, a missing Messiah, and a mysterious message from a young man dressed in white. That would make anyone afraid, wouldn't it? Yeah. Or perhaps they were afraid of what the disciples would say. Would they think that the women were crazy or seeing things? Would they even believe them? The women were afraid and for a good reason. And the fear became another stone that needed to be rolled away. But here is another miracle of Easter. The stone was indeed rolled away. It, it, it must have been. Because we know the story. The women did tell the disciples, and Jesus did appear to those disciples, just as we mentioned. And he forgave Peter for denying him. And he promised to send the Holy Spirit to them. And he helped them understand what had just happened. And how it fulfilled the promise of scripture. And he ascended into heaven, and the Holy Spirit came, and every last stone in the lives of those disciples were rolled away. Because there's, there's no stone too large to God, no obstacle that God cannot remove. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Do you want proof of the resurrection? There's none that is more convincing to me than this. 
that Peter and the disciples who were shrinking in fear in their locked upper room became the most fearless witnesses to the resurrection that you could ever imagine. Most of them died unafraid and unwilling to deny what had become the cornerstone of their faith. That Christ died, rose again, and promised one day to return. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. No one was more fearless than those first disciples. And no stone that the world rolled in front of them could stop them now. Not prison or threat of death or anything else in this world. Now that is a miracle. So what changed? How did they go from hovering in fear in their locked room to boldly sharing the story of Jesus with the world? Who rolled away the stone for them? What else could it be? It was Jesus himself who was raised from the dead and appeared to them and rolled away the, all the stones that were stopping them from doing his work. And after he did, they fearlessly proclaimed the good news of the resurrection of our Lord. No stone could trap them anymore. That too is the miracle of Easter. For them and for us, may God roll away stones between us. May God's spirit of love flow and nourish us. And may we share the good news Hallelujah. Easter is about an empty tomb. And so much more. It's about our risen Lord. With us, us always. Roll away the stones and obstacles in our lives. It's about God helping us to live our lives without fear. Following our risen Savior wherever he leads us. And helping us to usher in God's reign. Easter means that there is no tomb that God cannot free us from. Amen. There's no stone that God cannot roll away, regardless of how we get there. God doesn't want us to stay there. God wants to free us from whatever it is that is keeping us from the new life in Christ that the miracle of Easter offers to all of us. What is the greatest message of Easter? In remembering the resurrection of Jesus, Easter also celebrates the death, sorry, the defeat of death and the hope of salvation. Amen. So do not be afraid. Trust in God. Believe in God's Son. Rejoice in God's love for you. And do not worry about who will roll away the stone for you. Whatever the stone may be, for Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. The life-changing power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ allows us to experience the transformation that comes from recognizing Jesus is risen. Understanding that anyone can be forgiven regardless of their past. And realizing that true change and purpose driven life are possible through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The resurrection means Jesus is who he claims to be. A celebration that Jesus is alive. It is the empty tomb of Jesus that gave us hope. Hope in the here and now. Hope in the hereafter. The resurrection means Jesus has the power to claim to have. The resurrection means Jesus did what he promised to do. The resurrection matters because my past can be forgiven. The resurrection matters because my present problems can be managed. The resurrection matters because my future can be secured. Hallelujah. 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 The tomb in your life, the stone that's blocked the entrance can be open because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.